Hi, Scizorin here with another episode of Path of Exile University. Today, we are going to do a hopefully shorter episode um, and talking about maps. Uh, there will be like, it's hard to cover some things because we are not 100% sure of what is changing. So I will most likely, uh, hopefully on like the somewhere between the 18th to the 20th of January, pop out a new mapping guide depending on how much with the Atlas has changed. I feel like they've been hinting a lot at the Atlas changing. Um, so obviously it's going to be hard to change a lot here, but for things that might not be changing, we're going to be pumping out some like tips and tricks, talking a little bit about maps in general and, and doing a, a short, shorter episode of maps. So another episode of Path of Exit University, and we'll be doing a new one every semester, AKA before Lee start. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys, Enjoy them. Maps. Mapping 101 with Professor Zizrin. So, very, very important that you do realize that you get a hideout here in uh, Act 2. Um, it's important to talk to Helena in town and I do that quest. Uh, it's a very, very easy thing to take for granted when you have played the game a lot. Sometimes forgot how you got hideouts in the first place. Um, but here's where you get your first hideout, and it is required to complete the epilogue quest for unlocking your map device. Um, important also to note that you can change the size of your map device, which I will show real quick, just by clicking this thing down here, um, and then clicking edit, click on your map device, and then use your scroll wheel. So you don't need to just have the large one or just have the short one, you can edit that as you please. So, how do you unlock the map device? Um, there's a Curic quest line, um... After you've killed Kitava in Act 10, it'll be in the epilogue. I have killed a different endgame boss that removes just... my normal town. So I have a different endgame uh, epilogue called Career Shores. But um, there will be like a... You'll run in like the top right of the epilogue. And then you'll run in the bottom me right-ish. And then in the bottom me left. Uh, and once you've done all three of those, um, Kirak will be like, oh, go to your map. And he'll like recreate your map device and um he will give you a map and you can also start looting maps as early as tier 7 which brings us to what are maps maps are a piece of end game and you do find them as early as tier 7 and it's like a end game that you can roll it's an end game you can roll so you start obviously with low tiers the tier 1 maps, and then I can either alchemy them, I can scour them, transmute, alterations, augment, and there are different mods. Some, well, most of them make it more dangerous. Some of them, what well, might be easy for your character to deal with, some of them might be hard. They drop as early as Act 7. Um, and the more you roll on a map, you can see that the item quantity and item rarity and pack size are going higher. So when I alchem up, and I can get up to 6 mods by default, uh, you can go up to like 71 quant, 42 rarity, 27 pack size on this one. You can chisel them for increased quality. Um, and then you could also vol them. Um, when it goes unidentified, the mods don't change. So, so the mods that were on before are still there. So don't have to worry about that it corrupted it and changed the mods. Um, if you find an unidentified map, obviously you don't know what is on it. Uh, there are some other outcomes as well. With a Valorb, you can get them up up to 8 stats. Let's see, let's, let's alk some actually. Here. Um, so here you can see that the map has 8 stats being very, very rewarding. Even without chisels, you can see it has 113 quantity and a lot of pack size. But it also has reflect physical damage. It has crit, which is very dangerous. Um, and if my character is a fist damage build, then I would not be able to do this without rolling a sextant. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about sextants later. Uh, but either way, so they're like a customizable endgame. Um, there's loads of bosses. There are unique maps with uh, bosses. And um, through maps, you can also discover a lot of other mechanics. Um, and again, so for how to drop them... Um, White monsters can never drop maps higher than the map they're in. Blue monsters can drop plus one. And um, unique monsters, so the, like, the, the boss, can drop plus two. Now, the adjacency stuff hopefully doesn't change. But uh, either way, means that if I want a chateau to drop, then uh, I would have to be in like a shore, a mausoleum, a grotto, 
or a temple. And they're also like slightly more likely to drop them. Um, there are other ways we'll talk about 3 to 1 and stuff as well. That might change, but it's, it's worth talking about because it's such a powerful thing. Uh, but either way, uh, it's, it's the uh, adjacency is very, uh, very important to know about. Um, and that just means that I can, now that I have like Peninsula unlocked, I could drop that from well, another tier 16 somewhere else. So as it caverns, the boss could drop a Peninsula. Um, but we don't really know what is changing or not with mapping. There's just so much coming. Um, so we'll see. And yeah, here you can see only connected maps and maps previously completed can drop. There is a two times waiting for incomplete maps and four times waiting for adjacent map. So if it's incomplete and adjacent, you'll have a very big chance that it can drop. So, um, Zana has a uh, crafting bench, basically, where she can enhance your maps. And this changes every single league. Um, always pay attention to Havoc 616's Twitter, because if Beyond isn't there, Havoc is in shambles. Uh, it's a very, very popular mod for racing just because it adds so many monsters to the map. We'll, we'll talk about Atlas completion and the map device now. So, Fortune favors the Brave. This can give you anything, including the ones you haven't unlocked yet. So, even though I haven't unlocked Delirium, Fortune favors the Brave could give it to me. Uh, I think Delirium is 14 or 16 Chaos Orbs, but if I get it through this, it's only 3. So, Fortune favors the Brave is pretty good. Um, and... All of these also let you unlock that league's league specific items. So if I look up PoE uh, domination, it should show me what uniques came from that league. Uh, let's see. So if I look up PoE domination on the wiki, it says break script, pass, respite, the taming, blood of the crew, and Lavinia spirit. These are also from Nemesis and Anarchy, at least one of them. Um, but more importantly, some of them will be. Um, yeah, Domination and Nemesis. So some of them will be from multiple um, leagues, which is really, really cool that you can get them through this. So that's an important uh, factor as well. And um, some of them will be just like a really, really good way to make a lot more currency. Like some people will farm Blight Maps a lot to try to make currency there. Delirium, even though it's insanely expensive, um, will also be a really, really good way for like experienced players to gain currency. And before we cover the map bonus, some people will be wondering how my map device has five slots. That is by doing four of the Legion emblems. Doesn't matter which ones, as long as they're all different. So you could do a Karui, Eternal Empire, Marraketh, and Val. And then when you've done four of those, it will unlock the five slot map device. And that will let you put in more Scarabs. Um, another thing you could put in, if I put in a uh, Sacrifice of Dusk, uh, dawn, midnight, or noon. It is going to open a Val side area. Really, really good way to farm some easy six things at the start of a league. Uh, these do drop corrupted, but you can recolor the corrupted items in your crafting bench. Um, so that's a very, very good way. If you put a sacrifice fragment in with a map, it will give 5% quantity. It won't open a Val side area, but it will give 5% quantity. So if I put in four of these plus a map, uh, it'll get 20% quantity. So let's talk about the Atlas completion bonus, what it does and why it's important. When I complete a map that is like normally white without enhancing it, like you can see that Mausoleum uh, on my Atlas right now is tier 8. We haven't talked about Watchstones right now, but Mausoleum is tier 8, but naturally it is uh, white. And that means that to complete this and get the bonus objective, all I have to do is clear the map while it's blue uh, or, tr or transmuted. Magical. Once the maps are like naturally yellow, um, then I have to do them rare. And if they are naturally red, I have to do them corrupted um, and rare. However, any map, any map, no matter what, you can complete it white and then it will be droppable. You can do it completely without any rules. Even on tier 16s, maps that are normally red, and they will be droppable. This is only for the bonus. And what does the bonus do? Uh, it does not, in fact, drop a single more map. If you have uh, the max bonus, which is currently 154, you will drop exactly the same amount of maps as somebody that has zero. And that's very important to know. So what does the bonus do? The bonus... Uh, just that they will, if you have a hundred, it guarantees that a map will drop at one higher tier than what it normally would. 
Uh, so how does this work? If I'm in a tier 11 map and I kill a white monster, can that map uh, drop a tier 12? No, because that goes back to the earlier rules where a white monster can never drop higher than its own tier, right? But if that, if you're in a tier 11, you kill a white monster and the, and the game goes, I'm about to drop you a tier 7 map, that would be a tier 8 map. So on in general, you will get better and higher tiered maps on average. So it is a very, very good bonus. Once you have it up to 154, it is a 54% uh, chance that it will drop two tiers higher. So if I'm in a tier 11 um, and a map was about to drop a tier 9, it is a 54% chance that I will get a tier 11. Um, so very, very good bonus. Very, very worth farming. Uh, and the map bonus is also how you unlock uh, these. So you can see that you need 14 more bonus objectives to unlock this modifier. And I haven't 100% tested this, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, this is based around the Atlas bonus completion. And not just normal completion. Uh, what, what maps that Zana sells you. And we'll talk more about how to abuse Zana's map selling here in a second. Um, there is also an awakening bonus objective. Um, and there is also watchstones. We're about to talk about that here in a second. But currently, um, you get watchstones from doing uh, the conqueror, conqueror line. And um, you start out by, once you're exploring any maps in your first corner, you encounter Baron, uh, Kirik's brother. And after doing a few maps, you get to fight him. A few maps in that zone. Um, once you have killed Baron he will drop a watchstone. So you would basically, you will find citadels every tier three map in any zone you do. And uh, that's actually how you discover Zana as well, is the first tier three map. But yeah, the first four bosses you get, any tier three map in any corner, there are no lower than tier three maps in corners. So there's no tier two or one map in a corner. Uh, so any map in a corner will spawn your first four bosses, and then you'll spawn them in the four inner regions, and then they'll start spawning everywhere. But more importantly, uh, then you get a watchstone. Where did I put it? So you get one watchstone. Normally it would look like this when you only have the citadel, and I can put a map in, and this will upgrade the tiers of all the maps. This doesn't change any item that has already dropped. So if I have a million shores in my inventory, all of those won't magically go to level six. Um... And now, if I... Let's say that it looks exactly like this, right? It looks exactly like this. I haven't completed Crater. I haven't completed Chateau. Um, sure, however, I have completed. So if I'm doing a Tier 5 map down here, let's say, my Tier 6 up here can drop without uh, being completed. But obviously, my Chateau is not completed, so I would need to do one of the adjacent maps for that to drop. Um, and you can... It's the one of the most important things to do... It might feel very overwhelming, but one of the most important things to do is make sure that the map you want to drop is showing on the Atlas. So if I don't have completed tier 16s or I'm adjacent to them, I cannot drop them, right? So that's like the number one thing, the one, number one pitfall is sometimes I see people, they'll like buy maps off trade. Uh, let's go through, there might be like some tiers. So. Right now is a good example. I only have one tier 9, so every single time a tier 9 drops right now, it is always going to be a thicket. No other tier 9 exists on the Atlas. No other map can possibly drop for me. So sometimes this is a good thing. Maybe I really want to target farm thicket. It's great density, a lot of monsters, no divination cards, but you know. And there are not a single tier 8 map on the Atlas. So what happens to all the tier 8 to 0 maps? They're gone. You don't drop any. If you have lower tiers, they would go to that tier. So right now, I don't have tier 8s, but I do have tier 7s. That means that I'm going to get more tier 7s. And I do have a separate video as well talking about how to farm easy 6 things in residence, abusing some of the map mechanics, but probably changing with the upcoming Atlas. Um, and then, once for every set of 4 watchstones you get, even if there are, for example, 4 Baron, but for every 4 watchstones you get, you get an awakening level. So for every four watchstones, this region has four because that is a level four Drox spawn. Uh, unique boss gets 3% more life, 1% chance for additional connected map to drop. So this is the awakening level per four. 0.5% uh, chance for a Shaper, Elder uh, map to drop from tier 14 plus. 0.5% chance for an additional Atlas base type. 
1% chance for unique items, 1% chance for additional map currency item. So it's basically, it's making your map harder, but you're also getting a lot more reward for it. And a decent chance when you're just spamming loads of maps that you will get a really cool unique off the boss. And, and yeah, as you said, increased chance for awakening level for the conquerors of the Atlas to drop additional rewards. So these are the conquerors and they will drop better stuff the higher the awakening level is. There is also an awakening bonus. And you can see that here. Um, complete awakening bonus objective. Um, so this is your chance to receive your bonus missions, which we haven't covered yet. And we will cover it more here in a second. Um, and also uh, effects of the modifiers on non-unique maps. So basically... Uh, if I had like 100% more lightning damage, it's going to be 109 with this little awakening level. Um, and yeah, it'll just keep increasing. It'll make generally everything more potent and powerful. But, um, how do you get this bonus? So if I look at my maps right now, let's look at the Necropolis for instance. Um, if I hold alt on this, uh, awakening objective incomplete, right? Here... On the Necropolis, it says Awakening Bonus. Complete this map with at least Tier 16 and Awakening Level 8. Now, even though the base map here requires to be Corrupted and Rare for the bonus, you could actually do the Awakening Bonus on just a normal Alked map, Blue map, or a White map. Um, so that, that doesn't matter. But uh, you can, you need to have Awakening Level, it needs to say 8, and then it needs to be uh, Tier 16 and anything. Um, and, and some of them will be as low as like this one only needs to be tier 14 and then level 2 awakening level. Um, and it can take a while to like unlock very high awakening level, but it is well worth it because that is how you get, um, the Zana missions. And now we are going to talk about the Zana missions and we, I will be going back into some more tips and tricks as well. Uh, I might do that at the end, but master missions, why do you run them? When do you run them? And why? Um, so there are five different master missions. You have Einar, um, which is, uh, Bestiary. You have Alva, which is Incursion. You have Nico, which is Delve. You have Jun, which is Betrayal. And you have Zana, which is Maps. There is a very, very good reason to run all of these. They're all very, very strong in their own way. If I had a tier list, I would put best tier at the top. Obviously, extra so much so because I'm solo self on. But there are so many good rewards, which we did talk about a little bit in the last lesson. But insane amount of good rewards. Split Beast, uh, Imprint, Free Exalts with this one, Add Suffix, Remove Prefix. Um... Adding a mod to Flask being extremely powerful and just all the unique items and uh, there's a lot of beasts that give guaranteed six things. It's extremely valuable. You 100% want to make sure you are running best theory. Incursion. This is probably the least popular one, but in some ways the best one. Um, so when and why do you run Alva? So a lot of builds need specific influence based items. Maybe you need a Elder Bow. Maybe you need a Warlord Ring. An Incursion adds a lot of monsters to the map. Um, and if you're farming Divination cards. So if you're farming Dapper Prodigy. You're farming uh, the King's Heart or whatever the Combs Heart card is called. Uh, putting Incursion on those is insanely well as well. Uh, maybe you're early on farming Channel for a Tabula. Putting Incursion on helps so much. Even if you don't do the Temple. Um, so just opening the incursions for extra monsters, so good. Um, and I try to make sure when I'm farming these influence items that drop light, um, I think this one's just fully ready to spawn, but normally it, would, it indicates here, like sometimes there'd be a yellow one there, a yellow one there, and a yellow one there, indicating when the influence is going to pop. It's not random, it's completely deterministic. And then I know that like on this one, I can pop scarabs, I can pop sextants, I can pop incursion. Um, oh yeah, it's blue actually. It's blue, not yellow. It turns yellow after you've done it. Uh, it's blue, light blue. But either way, it's completely deterministic. You know when to do it. You can pop all the juice, uh, with incursion and beyond and six consoles. And then you know that it is, uh, a larger chance for you to get influence items. That's the best use for it. So farming div cards or farming influence items. I normally, um, I normally will mostly bother running the red ones i don't run that many white or yellows so i've probably run like 80 to 100 of the red ones very few of the yellow and white ones 
Um, because it's mostly something used for farming div cards or influence items. Nico. Nico's great. It's pretty self-explanatory. He gives you soul fight. You want to use it in the... This is pretty much for all of them. All the master missions. But you want to use it in the highest uh, tier possible for that tier. So for example, in the white one, you want to use it in a tier 5. Because uh, Nico will give you more soul fight in a tier 5 than in a tier 1. It will give you more in a tier 16 than a tier 11. And in a tier 10 than a tier 6. So make sure you use it in the highest tier, and the better you roll it, you can use Sacrifice Fragments, you can chisel your maps and alk them, and if you get over 100 quantity, you get a lot more Sulfite than if you have zero. Jun! Jun, again, Betrayal, very complicated mechanic. It's worth using when you're farming for Betrayal, um, betrayal specific items. Um, some of these are level requires as well, like for example, level 6 for the um, Unveil Master thing. And a lot of people don't like John. But worth doing, very, very strong. And uh, Katarina as well is a fairly good boss that has a lot of unique. Zana, one of my favorite mechanics in the game. Um, when do you use it and why? So Kirak, when you first meet him, he'll sell, sell you a bunch of tier one maps. This is actually really, really nice for unlocking your Zana quickly. I guess we could just cover uh, three to one now as well. Um, this is going to be a little bit not like this because some people are going to absolutely hate this, but for the people, for the people that will understand this explanation, it could be a large boon and help them a lot. So let's say that while starting a new league, I may be, sometimes I've farmed Blood Aqueduct, but either way, I found a bunch of maps while leveling. Sometimes you find a bunch of the same one. And very commonly, I'll get, let's say, 12 parks because you can buy a bunch from, from Kirak. Maybe maybe I have like 11 and then I run the other ones hoping to draw parks and stuff. Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12. Let's say I have 13 because I've bought some from Kirak and something I try to find, um, something I try to find um, at the start of the game, I try to find the prophecy called The Lost Maps. Because what that does, it's very, very common and just gives you a bunch of tier 1 maps. Extremely common. I didn't get it. That doesn't matter. We already have the 13 maps, right? But this is technically doable with 9. Technically do. And I've done that. I did that lastly with 9 or 10. So, there is a 3 to 1 mechanic in Path of Exile, which is very mindfucky, but it's actually simpler than you think. So, this park map can sell... Depending on different combinations, let's see. Where is park? Park is like here. Let's remove these. So this is what it would normally look like. So here we have park. It's a tier one map. Let's look at the tier twos. And this is a uh, region based. It's region based as well. So if I sell three parks, it will turn into either dungeon, wasteland, conservatory, and pier. It cannot turn into haunted mansion. It cannot turn into phasmophobia. Uh, phasmagoria. Right? So you can only turn into one of these four. Now, this is kind of complicated, but the TLDR is think of every item as having its own item ID, right? Every item is unique. They're special in their own way. Uh, and based on different combinations, you can force these. So for example, these three will turn into pure. But if I remove that last one, that's also pure. Remove that last one, pure. We're getting a lot of peers here. Uh, but this one, this combination is Wasteland, right? And then, so this combination, these three are always pure, right? No matter what I do with these, no matter where I change them, no matter what way I put them in, those are always pure. And this, now your brain should be exploding because this is one of the most powerful things for Indian Path of Exile is that you have full control over your Atlas with three to ones. These three are always conservatory, these three are always dungeon. These three. And this is just... This is nothing about the way I've positioned them in my inventory or where in, anything like that. This is just... It's a... It's random based on their item ID. Right? But here we see we have two conservatories. So, like, it's... Think of it as, like, you're pouring potions and experimenting. Right? Um... So these three are pure, etc. So they're, like... It's completely random based on the, the, the base ID. So what I do... Is I would do it like this. Okay, peer. Let's see if I can get all three into peer. Well, this last one turned into conservatory. Can I do that in a different way that this also turns into a peer? 
And then I just like experiment till they're both peers. Let's see. And then I wasn't able to do it with that combo. There. Now I have two peers. Right? See how that worked? And then I'm like, what about this combo? Nope, that goes Wasteland. Nope, not those two. Because you have so many combos you can try here. Boom! Now I have three peers. Right? So you just experiment with it. And alking this, transmuting, nothing changes it. It's just based on the item ID. So now, I already have a tier 3 map. So by selling these three peers, I don't care what this turns into. When I kill the boss in this, I get Zana. And the nice thing about this is that if you if you're like Tai Tai Killer and you get there really fast, that means that you can force a Zana before you get plus one master missions at midnight. Which I forgot to mention, but midnight GMT or 1 a.m. GMT, it switches a little bit with time zones, but it will be uh you get plus one of all master missions. It'll be based on the last map you did. So before you go to sleep, if you do a red map, you'll get red ones. If you do a white map right before going to sleep, you'll get a white one. Yeah, so then you can just force Zana very early. And now when you have Zana, see, the map mechanic in Path of Exile are so complicated that it feels very overwhelming. And that's why I do this, because even though even this is pretty complicated, hopefully it makes it easier for some of you. Because a lot of people struggle on getting map completion, whereas I can get to like 60 to a 90 in one or two hours. Well, how do I do that? A lot of it is through the three to one mechanic that you just saw, but I also very early force Zana so that I can start unlocking master missions, which is obviously every time I kill a map boss, I have a chance of getting a master mission. So how are you on now we can see here, she's selling like tower. And if I'm holding down alt, it shows like, oh, I don't have a chateau. I haven't completed that. Well, I could buy that. Well, there's no other map that I want here. How do I get new ones and when does that respawn? There are, not 100% sure, but there are some other thresholds she respawns. It's like every time, every time she levels up, which I don't, I think it's the, the old decoration mechanic level up. Every time she does that, she gives you a new set. Because uh, I thought it was these. I thought it was these, but I checked and it's not that. But anyway, there's some sort of like random reset too. They get like six or seven times per league. But you can force reset these. So remember, these are the ones she's selling. Boom. Up and up an atlas. And now when these map open, I don't have to do anything in this map. You can just like waste them up. Now they're all new. So I can just like, well, I didn't need any of those either, Sana. I'm really hoping for like a Cortex here. Ooh, that's the one I needed. Thank you so much, Sana. So you can just reset this. And that means that even even your white mi white missions has like um, um, a usage late game. So you can force reset this over and over again. Like, oh my God, a Cortex. And you can only get Cortex once you have like pretty high completion. Things like 100 and... I am not 100% sure yet. Um, but yeah, you can force reset these. Force reset them just by doing the Atlas mission. So you can like farm Cortexes this way, etc. So every time I open a map, I don't have to do it. If you don't want to do the map, I mean, it's very often worth checking the Zana. But every time I open an Atlas mission through Zana, she resets her inventory. And right now, I'm just using my white missions. Um, and that's likely not changing as well. <sighs> Let's see. So, what are the important things to roll on a map and what is scary? So, what is map quantity? Map quantity is that the monsters that are in the map are going to drop more stuff. Which is obviously good, right? You're going to get more yellow items, more uniques. More everything. And the most powerful stats are quantity and monster pack size. Because if there's more monsters in the map, um, then it's more better. Same with why we would use things like scarabs or sextants that put even more monsters in the map. That is also more better. The more things that are there, uh, the more better everything is. And then the more quantity we have is even more better. Right? It just keeps getting more and more better. Um... So how do you get quantity on your map? Um, so there's a couple of things you can do. You can volley your maps. It's very unpredictable and not every build will be able to do every map. But you can volley them giving them 8 stats and that will give you a very high quantity. Sometimes up to like 150, 160 I think is the highest I've seen on just a map. 
Uh, obviously, make sure you're using Chisel, especially on all your high maps. Chisels and Trainly is very expendable. You should be using them on pretty much every map. In Soul Cellphone, I generally only use them on Reds, and later only on 13, 14 plus. Um, but it does make your maps gooder. Then, um, to, to, to achieve a lot of alchemy, you want them to be rare, so you want to alk them. Um, to, to achieve a lot of quantity, I mean. Um, alchemies can be kind of hard to sustain in solo self find. Uh, you can buy alchemy herbs for regrets from the vendor, important to remember. But, now let's talk a little bit about things like sextants, delirium orbs, fragments, etc. We already covered that incursion adds a lot of, uh, density and monsters to your map, but there's also scarabs. Now, there's a bunch of them, and you should just look through all of them, but for example, Legion is very strong, and the gilded ones of each one is particularly strong. Um, gilded one guarantees that there's going to be two? Two? Uh, two legions, and each of them will have a general, so there will be at least four uh, generals in the map, and if you're using other mechanics, such as sextants, league mechanics, maybe there's something else Let's say you're able to get, for some reason, you're able to get six legions in a map with one naturally spawning or something. Then all of those will have two generals. So then you would get 12 general. Uh, oh, sorry. It's the winged one. It's the winged, which is a higher tier that you currently can only get in heist. Uh, gilded, gilded legions, only one extra monolith, but they are all generals. Uh, and then winged is two. Two? Uh, there's loads of cool ones as well. Cartographer scarabs. I usually say these for tier 14 to 16 maps. Um, Parandus, the gilded one guarantees Parandus. Shaper and Elder will drop Shaper and Elder loot. And, and a lot of these are better saved for, like, higher maps. Um, so I don't use them early, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, like, very, very, uh, exponential in Path of Exile, right? You don't want to just use Chisels, you don't want to just use Scarabs, but when I'm putting on, like, Chisels, Sextants, which we're about to talk about, Scarabs, everything six consoles then it's like it's just so much that it makes all the other investments you make more worth it and that's very very cool and yeah you can put in sacrifice fragments as well this is very good early on if you've gotten a shit ton of them picking up div cards sometimes from league mechanics uh you can use the shit ton just to get more quantity to hope to drop more maps more quantity more better um and then let's brush on sextants as well. Sextants is something you put on the watchstones. That's something I'd be surprised if changed. Uh, and there are different ones per tier of sextants. You have simple, prime, and awakened. And um, you can vendor them for the tier above. May the oh, cool. Pay. Vendor recipe. Um, but the way these work is that you would um, use them like this. And you can use them over here too. So now it means that three... Three nice maps in this region will have an invasion mob. Well, I don't really care for invasion. I don't really want to do that. Don't really want to do this either. Don't really want to do this. However, here you can see area contains four additional packs of monsters that deal cold damage. Uh, four additional, etc. This one makes you immune to reflect. Very good to know that this one exists. Uh, I want to get the physical ones. This one can break some builds. Uh, if you're using an enduring mana flask, this one can feel like shit because it stops it being enduring. Um, there, this is the one I wanted. This, all of those monsters have proximity shields. They're horrible. I always roll over this unless I'm essence drained. Uh, but the physical sextant, yeah. Uh, and then there's uh, more things on prime sextant and on awaken that are more special. Um, like, for example, um, what are the monsters called that fight each other? Hunted traders? I think they're called hunted traders. Uh, and they drop like, they have like 500 or 1,000 quantity increase or something. It's like, they just drop a large amount of stuff. Um, so they're really, really good to get, and there's just so many cool ones. Um, wonder if I could find, um, there's like a combo you can do, which I have a video on with, uh, Nemesis Monsters. Uh, see if I have a video. I know I have a video for that. But I'm gonna try to show really quickly, just to show to new players the true, uh, the true progress of, um, of, uh, doing... Uh, sextants and scarabs so obviously you know what maps normally look like for you but at peak investment when you know what you're doing and you've invested into scarabs sextants etc well you can just look how much stuff is dropping uh for me and just look at the sheer amount of currency and actually this is not even peak you can actually do more than this so once i finish this incursion here and there's so many monsters that it's actually lagging out my game completely 
Um, but, oh, actually, I think that was my PC lagging. Um, but either way, you're about to see a rain of currency. And you can see there's way more, many more monsters. And the rewards are going to be more gooder. So you can see it's just pouring out rewards here. And this is a combination of scarabs and sextants. And what I was talking about, that it was um, exponential rewards. Uh, and that all your rewards is making the other stuff worth more. You can see it's raining bases. Uh, and, and once you are able to like look more into these mechanics, and I do realize that it's pretty advanced, but it will uh, be very, very worth it. And, and this is in the How to Progress Your Atlas POE University. At the end, I show you exactly what to roll and how to do that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, like, it's very, very, uh, very, very good. And I do want to try to keep this episode short because we don't know what's changing. And I will try to make an episode um, after. Is there any questions?